Thank you for staying tuned to Channel's television and welcome to Newsroom Series, this edition covering the Northeast. And we we'll start off immediately in Gombe State, which is building the capacity of its magistrates, district come appellate judges, bailiffs and other court officials who will man and operationalize the small claims courts initiative of the federal government, which Gombe has domesticated. Small claims courts set up for speedy resolution of commercial disputes aim to help small and medium-scale businesses stay alive by recouping bad debts ranging from 100 naira to 3 million naira within 60 days of filing their complaints. As a record holder of the first place in the ease of doing business two years in a row, Gombe State hopes that by operationalizing the Small Claims Courts Initiative of the federal government, it will scale up confidence in existing and prospective investors in the state. The expression, I leave it to God, is common among small business owners when all fails in recovering money stuck in hands of difficult debtors. Well, that era may soon be over in Gombe State, which is amongst the five pioneer states in Nigeria to domesticate federal government's small claims courts initiative for fast and efficient justice delivery in commercial disputes. Unlike conventional courts that may take months or years for commercial disputes to get settled, small claims courts can settle disputes of 100 naira to 3 million naira within 60 days or far less with significantly reduced bureaucratic bottlenecks. What we try to do with the small claims court is to give an opportunity to small and medium scale enterprises to access justice, creating a state where the common man can go to a court Get, a, get justice in a fast way and go back to business because the core is that we want people to go back to business, not stay and spend years going to court and litigating over matters and matters. We want you to come to court, get justice, go back to business and improve the GDPR of, your, of the country. A representative of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council says Gombe State is attempting another quantum leap after winning first in the ease of doing business twice. Small claims court is a special court so the, the appellate judges, the, magis, uh, the district judges, and also the court officials need special training in order to uh, have the technical know-how in operating the courts. A litigant does not need a lawyer to represent him in small claims courts. He can approach the small claims courts, have a, a fill of form, and also appear in, uh, in person to prosecute his case. The 61 magistrates trained to man small claims courts in the three judicial divisions of Gombe State say the initiative will strengthen the business environment of Gombe State. You don't need to own a certificate of incorporation before you go to the court. Even petty traders, even petty traders, a person that is, uh, uh, is owing 10,000 can go straight to the court and claim his money. One of the most important things of these small claim courts is to secure investments. The sense of securing investment, the sense of having to know that you would go to a particular place and get accelerated justice. With the 12 small claims courts distributed based on the volume of business activities across the three judicial divisions and 11 local governments of Gombe State, it's hoped that quick adjudication of commercial disputes will help the small business owners recoup their money stuck in the hands of bad debt and stay in business. We're still in Gombe State. The State University says it has recorded significant achievement in the conduct of its activities in the recent past. During a press conference organized by the university, the chairman, Gombe State Governing Council, says 57 non-academic staff have been promoted to various positions, while 22 academic staff have been promoted 24 professional cadre and 18 re readers. Additionally, dozens of academic staff have received their promotions, bolstering up morale and happiness within the workforce of Gombe State University. While revealing its expansion to the completed Duku campus of engineering, which awaits accreditation, the university also appreciates Governor Inuwa Yahaya for granting autonomy in the running of the university, prompt payment of staff salaries, gully erosion control amongst other positive changes. Since the inception of this administration, Governor Inua Mohamed has ensured the autonomy of this university by allowing the governing council and management to operate independently in line with the university law. With this measure of autonomy, independence has been established such that the administration of the state university 
is conducted smoothly without interference. May I at this juncture inform you that relative to the autonomy the university enjoys during the 51st meeting of the Governing Council held on Wednesday 14th February 2024, the Council approved the promotions of 22 academic staff to various positions. Out of these, four were promoted to the rank of professors and 18 others were promoted to the rank of readers with effect, of, with effect from 1st October 2022. Also, Council approved the promotions of 85 other academic staff to various ranks in the university system with effect from 1st October 2023. The Council also recommended the promotions of 41 other senior academic staff to various ranks subject to positive external assessments. The Council also approved the promotion of 57 non-teaching staff to various positions in their respective cadre with effect from 1st October 2023. In Bochi State, residents living on the outskirts of Bochi metropolis who have long suffered from a lack of infrastructure making commuting difficult for them now have a reason to smile with the inauguration of new roads in their communities. Four road construction projects have been inaugurated in communities within the Bochi local government area with the aim of improving access, inclusion and expanding the city. Our correspondent Hajira Aliu reports. <laughs> Excitement fills the air as the people cannot contain their joy over the construction of new roads in their communities. These communities, located in the suburbs of Bochi Metropolis, consist mostly of minority tribes, with some being newer settlements. Their plights have been largely ignored, but Governor Mohammed is finally giving them a reason to celebrate as he initiates the construction of the Saban Kaura Birishigandu BRC roads, spanning a 4.5 kilometer stretch. I really appreciate his coming because for his own campaign, people are saying he's just joking. But it's come to reality today. I'm really happy. Before you cannot pass during rainy season, all this road is like a river. You cannot pass. Before you pass, you turn to another road before you follow your house. Also included in this groundbreaking event is the 2.6 kilometer Gwalemeji Doka Rafinzurufi Das Road. Following this, the 1.1 km Bayara Township Road was also inaugurated. Additionally, the people of Zango and Gwalaga Mayaka will now commute with ease thanks to the construction of a 4 km road in their community. There are no tribes that are not represented in this place. And you are living in peace, especially during my tenure. I will never take you for granted. Bauti has suffered, especially the outside the city, for too long. They have been excluded because of some reason based on to the previous administrators. But there must be inclusion. Notwithstanding your geography, notwithstanding your faith, notwithstanding your tribe, you are a human being. These road projects have a total cost of 9 billion naira and will significantly enhance access and accelerate the development of the state. Hajara, Aliyu, Channels Television News. In Taraba State, the police command has honored four mobile police officers for rejecting 8.5 million naira bribe from a suspected bandit while on a routine stop and search operation. The police commissioner who rewarded them for their conduct also promised to recommend the four officers to the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kadi Egbetokun, for promotion and national recognition. 
This is the ever busy Jalingo Yola Expressway, located in Pantinapu, Yoro local government area of Taraba State, where a group of four police officers who were posted to a checkpoint for a stop and search operation intercepted suspected kidnappers in a vehicle who had collected a ransom of 8.5 million naira at about midnight. Two out of the three suspected kidnappers fled through the bush path, leaving one of the suspects who reportedly offered the officers the 8.5 million naira in exchange for his freedom. The officers say instead they chose to uphold the law and maintain the integrity of the Nigeria police force by resisting and arresting the suspect. Such amount we cannot be able to accept and allow you go free based on him offered that money for us. So the next action is for us to call that union commander and tell him that this is exactly what is happening at this very moment. So immediately he communicated with our two IC. Uh, you, twice you now move on on action, you come down to the scene and come and uh, hijack the issue and say that they sh this issue should be moved immediately to the police state command for proper investigation. And that is exactly what happened. The one that was apprehended offered them the bribe of that 800 and 8,555,000 there as a bribe so that they could allow him to go free. The officers insisted and arrested them, I mean arrested the occupant of that very starlet who was handed over to the CID office down investigation into the case is ongoing. Commissioner of Police, Tarabasi Police Command, CP David uh, Iloyo Lomo, have called for a discreet investigation to the case. Residents of Pantinapu, where the suspects were arrested, told Channel's television that the bandits used the adjoining mountains as enclaves and most times passed through their villages with their victims on motorcycles riding at high speed. They commended the officers for their unique gesture and commitment to duty. I think they deserve a national honor and a recommendation and it will serve as a kind of a... Um, how do I want to say it? It's, it, 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 will, it will actually give other officers that are in the service, it will boost their morale to do more and to protect us. Because definitely in this kind of hardship, I don't think somebody will be offered such kind of money and he will reject it. The unique disposition of the gallant police officers paid off and did not go unnoticed as the Inspector General of Police, represented by the Taraba State Commissioner of Police, honored the four officers and commended their resilience. The Inspector General stressed that such acts of heroism will serve as a morale booster to others. I shall recommend them to the force headquarters for consideration of commendation in whichever way they want to do it. Because in this claim, when there are so many financial challenges and the economy is, is, uh, is such that we just have to adjust in the interest of nation building. Over 8 million naira is very tempting. The suspected bandits and others arrested for other crimes will be charged to court to face the full weight of the law after discrete investigations are concluded. And still to come on Newsroom series, the Yobe State Government and police authorities have confirmed the death of one person and a number of others injured following an attack in Fika local government area by Fulani herdsmen. We have that story and more coming your way after this time out. Join us again. Welcome back. The Yobe State Government and the police authority have confirmed the death of one person, others injured, while several houses were razed following a reprisal attack on Gurujaje community in Fika local government area by suspected Fulani herdsmen. Residents of the community told channels television via telephone that the attackers also burnt down and carted away large food stuff, displacing over 1,500 individuals, including women and children. <laughs> this is the scene of the reprisal attack by suspected Fulani herders on Gurujaje, a community in Fika local government area of Yobe State. 
Houses burnt, foodstuff either destroyed or carted away, as the Emir of Fika, Al Haji Abali Ibn Mohamedou Idrissa, and the Fika local government chairman, Halima Joda, pay visit to sympathize with the victims. The situation prompted separate meetings by the Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, the Mbeno Association, and a joint security meeting chaired by Yuba State Deputy Governor, with about five emirs also in attendance to address the issue. There's a need for us to strengthen the unity of purpose for possession between your state. As we are all aware, the country we know we are the people of a lot of challenges, both in security and other insecurities being built in the country. So that we cannot give a chance because there are already criminals who wanted to take advantage of this situation to perpetrate more crimes. At the end of the meeting, both the Fulani herders and the affected farmers, as well as the Yobe State government, reach a memorandum of understanding to forestall the reoccurrence. The meeting is what I have connected with the recent crisis that has uh, ensured in three of our local government, comprising Pika, Gujuba, and Fune, whereby some miscreants organize themselves and unleash mayhem in some communities and setting some of the houses ablaze. It was as a result of that the state decided to call on this meeting so that all issues could be tackled and resolved. During the meeting, all the stakeholders have spoken. The Mete Allah leaders, the farmers, the traditional rulers, as well as the security heads, has expressed their mind with regard to the unfortunate incident. We have come, uh, we have taken care of how to control the situation, so the situation is now under control. We are now doing a larger sensitization in order to maintain the tempo uh, of the state government uh, in, in terms of um, um, security issues to, and to also try to sustain the relative security, the relative peace we have in the state compared to most of the states across the Federation. With the renewed measures of security network intelligence, proposed demarcation of cattle routes, establishment of grazing reserves and water points, it is hoped that the clash between the farmers and herders will be addressed. In Borno State, Governor Baba Ganazulum has reopened the Banki Amcheda International Market on the border of Nigeria and Cameroon to boost international trade and enhance security along the border communities. The governor also laid the foundation for the construction of international cattle market in the border community, which was destroyed by Boko Haram terrorists. Professor Zulum, after a bilateral meeting with officials of far north region of Cameroon Republic, says the initiative is to bring stability to the Lake Chad region. Banki community in Bama local government area of Bornu State borders Amcheda in Mora province in the far north state of Cameroon and it's famous for international trade between Nigeria and Cameroon. Despite resettling inhabitants to the town two years ago, the road leading to Banki remains dilapidated, making it easy target for Boko Haram terrorists. Governor Papagana Zulum is in the community and he receives the governor of the far north state and his entourage at the border. The officials are in the community to reopen the Banki International Market. This administration has focused on reinvigorating commerce and resuscitating our international border markets. Borno State is blessed with several international borders with the Republic of Cameroon, Nigeria, and Chad. The Bank International Market is one of the most important markets in the state. As it is a commercial hub for people in the far north region of Cameroon and the Republic of Chad. To this effect, we have so far rehabilitated 148 common owned shops with the support of the Indigenous Stabilization Facility. The reopening of the market marks a significant step towards restoring normalcy to the region. Let me ask you the opportunity to magnify the quality of relationship which characterizes the good neighborliness between the family region 
and the whole state, sharing the common border, so you find the similar, similar similitude of security challenge, economic growth, and sustainable development. After laying the foundation for the reconstruction of the international cattle's market, Professor Zulun commissions five blocks of two-bedroom apartments for teachers in the resettled border town. The governor then holds a bilateral meeting with officials of the Cameroonian government at the headquarters of the 152 Brigade Command. The governments of Cameroon and Nigeria are expected to hold further meetings to facilitate regional stabilization, promote trans-border trade and commerce, as well as strengthen security along the borders. The Adamawa state government is assuring the people of the, its commitment to reducing and possibly eradicating poverty among the people by the year 2027. This disclosure was made by the state coordinator of Poverty Alleviation and Wealth Creation Agency, Paweka Aisha Tubawa while briefing journalists on the activities of the agency in Yola, the state capital. According to the coordinator, a lot has been achieved in raising the status of the vulnerable since the revival of the empowerment agency by Governor Umar Fintiri led administration in the state. We accommodated 3,000 across the state. We had 10, but only nine were has, uh, fully functioned, uh, apart from that of Madagali, because of the, the level of damage for the insurgency. But now he has approved a release form to ensure that when we are resuming now, we are going to fully operate in Madagali. We have 3,000 youths that have benefited and graduated in December. And these are every month they receive 10,000 stipend to support them. That is by implication. Every month we are spending 30 million naira on youth empowerment on these skill acquisition centers alone. That is to say, over, seven, over 800, 780 million is being expended monthly on these skill acquisition centers to ensure that he equips our youth and women with viable skills. And what's the essence of that? Considering the level of developments that we have, what we know well, what we appreciate is whatever that we do, we need peaceful coexistence for us to enjoy the dividend of democracy. And what we will guarantee that for us to reduce poverty and unemployment to the barest minimum. And in Gombe State, Governor Inouye Yahaya says his administration is making serious efforts to address the food crisis confronting the country by providing security to enable the people return to their farms. Speaking with State House correspondents after he met behind closed doors with Vice President Kashim Shetima at the presidential villa in Abuja, he emphasized that the food crisis is not peculiar to Nigeria. The food crisis is not only prevalent in Nigeria, it's elsewhere. It's, it's, it's throughout the world because of the challenges that the world is facing. But our own has its own peculiarities because of the insecurity that has bedeviled a lot of our no states, especially in the northwest and the northeast. But that notwithstanding, we are putting serious effort to ensure that we restore normalcy, we provide security, and the people are back to their farms. So both on the uh, short, medium, and long term, we have our own strategies. Each state has its own. But we have keep with the federal government in order to ensure that uh, very soon we overcome these challenges and Nigeria is back to its feet. And that's it on the program for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us again same time next week when we'll bring you another round of editions of Newsroom Series. I am Bukola Koka. Bye for now.